Hey guys, I'm Sabrina. I'm from Taiwan. Today I would like to share with you my personal walk with Jesus Christ. And I always believe that if you speak your mind, you people remember you. But if you speak your heart, you can change people's lives. I was born and raised in Taiwan. Um, I was growing up in a dysfunctional family where my father was never around throughout important moments of my life. Even when he was around, he was in a fight with my mom. He had a long-term affair with another woman and he would always took us in, on this guilt trip as if it's us who get in the way for him to have happiness with that woman. And what he did to us was definitely wrong. He was not a good father. He was not a good husband. He was not responsible. But somehow, as a young child, I always thought, maybe there's something wrong with me. And maybe I'm just not good enough to deserve his love. And whenever my parents fought, my mom would go, get so stressed out. She would vent her anger and frustration on me. Even a tiny little mistake uh, will magnify her anger. She would say something really hurtful and to me and she would spank me. So I was constantly for fear. I know it too well what it was like to cry myself to sleep. And the next day you need to tough up and pretend nothing happened and that you are fine. But deep down I was full of so much fear and I really hated myself. And there's such a deep despair in me. And I started to build walls around my heart as a way to protect myself. So I started to build walls around my heart as a way not to get myself hurt. I kind of lived in this double life throughout my childhood into adolescence. And while I was at university, I was exposed to a world of religions. I was jumping from one to another hoping to find answer to my situation. And there was a time I was so serious about occultism that I would wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning to meditate, to pursue the out-of-body experience, and also to find inner peace. It did work for a short time, but when tribulations came, I quickly fell back to the depressive mode. I was pretty lost. I just wanted to find whatever I can grab to give a meaning to my life because inside was pretty much empty. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so in a way, I become very spiritual. I thought there must be a higher calling in my life. There would be other forces that can just come down and rescue me and solve all the problems I had. So it wasn't very complicated for me. I just, I was just looking for hope. You know, a hope where my life can be different. I would know how to get out of the trap I was in for a long, long, long time. Um, so I would believe in anything that people told me about Buddhism, you know, if you do good, you will end up in heaven, things like that. And they would teach you about there's a higher energy in the universe. If you can meditate, if you can um, empty yourself, you can elevate yourself and upgrade yourself into another level which is kind of like half God, half man. I don't even know what that means but I do anyway because I wanted to find that thing. I was always looking for the answer to my misery and a solution to a happier life. And in my senior year, I had a bad breakup. 
And this breakup kind of echoed my belief about myself that there's something wrong with me and I'm not good enough.、Um, if he finds out who I really was and he would leave me, right? So I was really sad and I feel ashamed because I thought it's it's my fault. And then my two other roommates, they were Christians and they brought me to church and they were. Genuinely concerned about me, they really walked me through that trying times in my life. So I decided to believe in Jesus because I thought, okay, I wanted to have the peace and joy that they had. However,、um, my walk with Jesus was pretty much a one-way thing in the early days,、um, because on one hand, I really want all the good stuff from Jesus, but at the same time, my heart was shot. I couldn't really respond to his love or comprehend what it's like. You know, like he's my father. You know, he loves me. So now I look back, I realize what my real problems are because my deepest fear was that if I open up myself to God, it will be a mess and He couldn't handle it, or if. He knew who I really was. He wouldn't love me anymore. I know it sounds very silly to you, but just bear in mind. I believe in those lies all my life. They were truth to me. So I continue this double life version 2.0 in my adulthood. I still go to church on Sundays. I read my Bible, but at the same time, I party a lot. I drank a lot, and I was barely sober on the weekends. I was running from relationship to another, and I just keep、um, pursuing all these worldly pleasures as a way to numb the pain inside me. I was in depression, but because I hid it so well that nobody knew. Living in a very、um, simple lifestyle for quite a while, I was. I was really a typical party girl, <laughs>、um, but then the end of the day, you feel very empty inside. You know this is not the solution to your problems. You knew it. You knew it, right? Even you live in sin, but you knew what is right for you. And I think it's more like a reminder of the Holy Spirit. I realize what is most important thing in my life、um, is to live a live your life right. My mom got really, really sick, so I was praying with my sister for her healing. It really came down on me that I realized I could not continue this double life anymore, and I wanted to be more serious with Jesus. So I repented from my sinful lifestyle and determined to start this new journey with Jesus, which I called it Silent Years, because those years are pretty much nothing. Pretty much happened except me and Jesus. I was reading my Bible a lot. I was praying a lot, but as I was going through the motions, I was really frustrated because now I know God more at the intellectual level. I know who He is, His love, His truth, but I just couldn't relate to God as my heavenly Father. Something just wrong. I I couldn't get intimate with Him. And that really frustrates me because I wanted more. And in 2015, I was、um, traveling to Israel with a group of Christians I I didn't know. These are really awesome people. God gave them a lot of spiritual powers, such as healing, prophesying, and a gift of worship. And I was like, sure, these people are so special because they are God's chosen one. They are cool. They give like those. Poor testimonies that you saw on TV, and in contrast, I was just so plain and ordinary. I really have nothing worth sharing, and I even thought I was an intruder. That my walk with Jesus was a knockoff. And then one day, one night, we were worshiping at by the Sea of Galilee, and there was this lady, young lady. She came to me. She was just hugging me, and she was. Loving on me, and 
keep telling me that God is very pleased with me. That was so overwhelming because I really sense a strong presence from the Lord, and He was outpouring all His love over me. And actually, for the first time in my life, I I started to realize that I matter to God, and that He sees me. I was not invisible to Him. Um, so I I broke down. I didn't know what else to do but crying. I was crying until my eyes got so swollen. But that was a epiphany moment for me because once you taste the sweetness of the Lord, you can never go back to where you were before. And I really sensed a shift taking place within me. I feel like I really wanted to move forward and pursue God, and I really want Him to pursue me. And and I knew that I knew that God wanted me to go through a healing process. And at that time, I didn't quite understand how would that work. But then, a few years later, God started to orchestrate a few、um, circumstances for me to meet a group of Christians who specialize in inner healing. Some people I can trust. So I started the counseling session with them, and God really、um, brought me back to those deep places where. You know, full of sorrow and pain, and he allowed me to bring it out under his light, so he could heal me. He also taught me how to forgive, to forgive myself and forgive others. And believe me, the whole process was so painful and intense. There was a, a few moments I really wanted to quit because I could barely even breathe. And on the other hand, because The enemy, they knew you are stepping into a new territory, so they wanted to stop you, right? Whatever they can. So all of a sudden, I was faced with opposition from people all around me, and thing, things at work was just like becoming so challenging, and I sunk into depression. But in the midst of the the difficulties, I never give up. I stick to the counseling sessions because. I knew God wants to heal me, and I wanted to finish this with Him. So I did the counseling session for about a year and a half. Most of the time is to deal with the lies that are deeply rooted in my life.、Um, so what I did is I have to learn to recognize them, I have to renounce them, and I have to get rid of them and replace them with God's truth, which is His love, His words. In Psalm 32:8, God says, "I will teach you and instruct you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you." And I really feel like this journey is like God breaking me down and build me back,、uh, up, building me back up、um, to be stronger than before with His love and truth. And I have to say, now I can really. Just be his daughter because I know who I am in Christ. I don't have to hide. I don't have to be ashamed of myself because I know he loves me just the way I am. When I say the silent years, this is actually my seventh year of my silent years with God.、Um, I have to say, I still struggle with a lot of stuff, but I really believe that、um, compared to where I was before, now I know I can work through these problems with God,、um, and I just have this、um, incomprehensible uncom- in- trust in God. Even though things didn't happen or turn out to be the way I expect. But I still decide to trust him no matter what. For those of you out there who struggle with your life, with your past, I really wanted to encourage you to be strong and courageous because God is with you. He is for you, not against you. He's always there for you, even though you don't feel him at all. And oftentimes, it takes partnership. Between you and God to walk through your challenges together, and that means you have to do your part. 
First of all, you need to give him permission to walk through your life and your circumstances. Secondly, there are decisions you have to make and actions you have to take. It may be very, very challenging for you and the result may not even be what you will be expecting. And as for how long does that take exactly, it really depends. Because I know someone, it only took her one song to have this total transformation. But for me, it was rather a gradual process that took years to restore. And no matter what cases you are in, um, I guarantee that as long as you don't give up, at the end of the day, you will definitely have this tremendous joy and peace that transcends all understanding. Um, and your life will never be the same. <laughs> okay, um, the last one, can I continue? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I hope my story more or less encourages you. And if you want some prayers or words of encouragement, please kindly leave your message down below. I would definitely pray for you. And thank you for watching this video and God bless you. Bye.